Hello, Texas Studies students. This is Coach Signs. I'd like to welcome you to my flipped video classroom lessons. Our very first lesson will be over Chapter 1, Texas Geography. The first word that we will be studying is obviously geography. Geography is the study of the earth, its physical features, and its people. Here we see a picture of this little dude studying the earth. Now, what I recommend that you do in your vocabulary diagram under the definition of geography, instead of writing the entire definition, break it down into two, maybe three words, making it a lot easier for you to remember. Now, my recommendation is you guys write down, study of the earth. That pretty much sums up what geography means. Our next vocabulary word is going to be the word trend. Trend is a general movement toward change over the course of time. Here in these pictures you see an example of a trend of people moving away from a farm, which has happened over the course of many years, moving towards larger cities, as we see down here. We also see trends or general movements toward the change over the course of time in fashion. People in the 70s dress a lot different than people do today. People 20 years from now will dress very different than we do today. We also see trends in technology and how the many devices we use today have changed in size and shapes from small flip phones back in the 90s to the new iPhone 6 Plus. That is also a trend. Now, to break down the word trend for your vocabulary diagram, I recommend that you break it down into, break it down into change over time. That would be a very good way to break down the definition and make sure that you draw a picture of it on the last column of your vocabulary diagram. Our next vocabulary word is climate. Climate is the expected weather condition over the course of time. Can anybody guess which of these two pictures represents the expected weather conditions in the Rio Grande Valley? Yes, it's this one right here. We pretty much have just one season, don't we? We have hot summers and very warm winters. We never get to see snow. It's very, very rare when we do. And we expect that it's not going to change over time. So this is why this is the expected weather condition of the Rio Grande Valley over time. Our next vocabulary word is the word populated. Populated means having inhabitants or having people. Here you see a perfect example of a city that has a large population. Uh, you see here this is actually New York City. This is Times Square downtown and look at all the people walking up and down the streets here. Like New York City here it has millions of people living downtown in Manhattan and moving amongst themselves every day, which that means populated, having inhabitants or having people. Our next vocabulary word is landforms. Landforms are features of the Earth's surface such as hills, valleys, rivers, and plains. Here in the picture you can see several of these. You can see here where the river begins and eventually leads into a bigger part of the river. We can also see mountains and hills all along the top of this picture. Now you can see the hills that lead up to the top of the mountains here and all around. We also see a valley down here. Now we also see signs of inhabitants, inhabitants down in the valley. Therefore, it is a populated valley. If you'd like to break down this long definition for your vocabulary diagram, I recommend possibly using features of the Earth's surface. Anything that is on the Earth's surface is a landform or a form of land. Now we're going to switch our attention to the six essential elements of geography. 
The essential elements of geography are the world in spatial terms, location, places and regions, movement, human environment relationships, and the use of geography. We're going to go ahead and start with the first essential element of geography, and that is the world in spatial terms. Now, the purpose of the first essential element of geography is to study the relationships between people, places, and environments by mapping information about them into a relating context. Now what that means is we're going to study geography. We're going to learn a lot of terms within this first chapter, which is the vocabulary you've already done and you're doing, and as we move on from chapter to chapter, learning different terms. Now with those terms, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to map things together. Information about the context of geography, as this man here is pointing out to geography around the world. We're going to study them in the relationships between people, places, and environments through Texas and the United States. Now, if you want to narrow down this definition, let's go ahead and do that. Now, this is how I would do it. I would say, to study relationships between people, places, and environments by mapping information about them. That makes it a little bit smaller and still keeps most of the information that we need. The next essential element of geography is location. How many of y'all would actually love to live here on this beachfront property in Hawaii? I know I would. There's two types of location. The first one we're going to talk about is relative location. The position of a place in comparison to another place. As you can see here in this beautiful property in Hawaii, this house right here is in comparison to the beach. That's how you can locate it. A lot of you guys today use different areas of relative location when you're going to the movies. Hey, the movies is close to Waterburger. The movies is across the expressway from Chick-fil-A. The Cinemark movies here in Mission is close to or relative in comparison to the Gold's Gym. That's how you're able to use relative co location in comparison to another place. This is usually how we give directions to each other. The second form of location is known as absolute location, the exact position of a place on earth. As we see on this map, this is an example of absolute locations. You see here the lines of latitude going across and longitude coming down, as well as the numbers around the globe here give exact locations of where they're at. These are known as coordinates. Coordinates are used to pinpoint exact locations and positions of a place on Earth. How many of you are familiar with Google Maps? The app that you use for directions when you tell your parents to drive you places. That uses absolute location, uses coordinates to pinpoint exact positions of a place on Earth where you need to be and where you're going to go. The next essential elements of geography is place. Now place is, or also known as physical environment, is the external surroundings and conditions in which something exists. Now in these two pictures you see two very different places. On the left hand side right here we have Death Valley, which is a national park in California. It's a desert. And on the right we have the Amazon Rainforest. These, both of these have external surroundings and conditions in which they exist, but are very, very different. The next essential element that goes with place is region. Now region is a geographical areas that are characterized by shared features. Now, here in the map of Texas as we see here, Texas is divided into four separate regions. Each region has similar characteristics, similar region. For example, this region down here. This is the Central Plains region. We'll be going over that later on in another chapter. But this has the features that are shared with 
along this area here are the coastline that you can see here and it's a lot of plains it's just a lot of flatlands very little hills now the coastline cannot be found in any other part of Texas only in this region that's why it makes it distinctly the coastal plains region now we will also be studying US history and the United States and how that began later on in the year but let's go ahead and look at the different regions of the US now we have the Northwest here the Southeast the Midwest the Rocky Mountains and the Pacific now we live in the Southwest region of the United States now these are the regions of the US the fourth essential element of geography is movement or also migrate now that means to move from one place to another now as we can see here in this picture the United States was built on immigrants people who migrated and moved to the US commonly like today a lot of people have migrated from Spain to Mexico and then from Mexico into the United States that's where most of us get our ancestors from people who have migrated from Mexico into the United States that's migrate or also known as movement to move from one place to another the fifth essential element of geography is human environment relationships human environment relationships are how people change their physical surroundings as you can see here in this picture people us humans have cut down forests now we do a lot of things when we cut down these forests especially something like this we create this a neighborhood neighborhoods are cut are made from those forests us humans have the power to physically change our surroundings to adapt on how we need to live for example most of you live south of the expressway here in plantation close to the school or around close to BL Gray now I graduated from Sherryland 10 years ago in 2006 back then there was nothing but fields back here there was very few neighborhoods in plantation and there was only the Pepsi sports park that's how much we have the power to change our physical surroundings to adapt how we need to be able to live the sixth and final essential element of geography is the use of geography the use of geography and its purpose is to show how the knowledge of geography enables people to develop an understanding of the relationships between people places and environments over time that is of earth as it was is and might be in the future we will be using this essential element throughout the year to talk about the geography of Texas as well as when we get into the United States now if you want to break down this vocabulary to make it smaller in your vocabulary diagram I recommend that you do this to develop an understanding of the relationships between people places and environments over time we'll be using the uses of geography throughout the year so this essential element will be key as we continue on this concludes our very first flip classroom video lesson on chapter one Texas geography